This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to New Jerusalem. Good morning, children. This is Minister Freeman and Sydney coming to you with another word of encouragement. I know you all are getting prepared for school, so this message is entitled, Be Prepared. The scripture this morning is coming from 1 Peter. Sydney, would you like to read the scripture for you? Chapter 3. Always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain about the hope you have. Okay. See it. And children, I want you to think about it. Have you ever had a teacher call on you in class to answer a question? And maybe you didn't know the answer to the question because you were daydreaming or maybe you weren't paying attention. Are you thinking about something else? Have you ever done that, Sid? Mm -hmm. But this happens to all of us. You know, so, you know, and when teachers call on you in, in class, they're helping you to get ready for a test, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They want us... They want you and us <laughs> to know that you've learned the lesson and that you'll do well on that test. Okay? In the same way, God wants to prepare you for a time when he will give you a test. But God's test won't be like your school test. It won't be pencil and paper or a computer. God tests may be asking you to help someone when, they're, when they need help. You ever had a test like that, Sid? Mm -hmm. How do you get ready for God's test? You pray and you study the Bible. Okay. Yes. To get ready for God's test, you need to be reading your word, praying, and practicing the living the way that God wants us to live. Living by loving others. Okay? And if you're kind and loving to others, then those type of others will want to be around you. And that, and when they come around you, they give you a chance to talk about Jesus, right? Okay, when you're nice and kind, don't kids want to be around you? So I know that school is getting ready to start. Uh, it starts tomorrow, right? It starts on Monday for you, yes. And some of you will be starting soon. So my challenge for you guys is to be prepared. Don't be daydreaming or distracted. Um, because if you do, you may miss the chance to share God's um, love with others. So I challenge you guys to be prepared. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, help our children to be prepared this school year. Let us not just study our lessons, but let us study your word and know your word. Let us pay attention 
So pay attention to those that are around us, God, so that we can help others in need when you give us an opportunity to be kind so that we can share your love with others. And I pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so this school year, my challenge for you guys is, is to be prepared. Amen. I love you. And let's have a great school year. Please help me right where you are to sing and lift this old congregational song. Come and go to their land. Come and go to their land. Come and go to their land where I'm down, where I'm down. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. I have a savior in that land. I have a savior in that land. I have a savior in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I have a savior in that land. I have a savior in that land. I have a savior in that land where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, oh, nothing but joy in that land, nothing but joy in that land, nothing but joy in that land, where I'm bound, peace and happiness in that land, peace and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land Where I'm bound, where I'm bound Peace and happiness in that land Peace and happiness in that land Peace and happiness in that land Where I'm bound Don't you want to go to that land don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound. So come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go. To that land where I'm bound. Amen. Growing up as a child, in my Thank you.
text today is coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 32 through 35. John chapter 6, verses 32 through 35. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread of life, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Today, I want you to know that there are some things you just can't live without. There are some things you just can't live without. Abraham Maslow was a Jewish American psychologist who is best known for creating Maslow's hierarchy of needs. His creation is a psychological theory of human development based on the universal needs of society. Maslow's needs are broken down into five categories or hierarchical needs, which are physiological needs, safety needs, belongingness and love, esteem needs, and self-actualization. Physiological needs include food, water, warmth, and rest. Safety needs are security and safety. Belongingness and love needs include intimate relationships and friendships. Esteem needs involve a need for prestige or a feeling of accomplishment. And self-actualization needs include achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. In it is the bottom level, the physiological needs that are impossible for us to live without. These are the basic needs that are essential for us to sustain life. These are the things that we just can't live without. And if we are without them, we will not remain alive. But today I want to show that there are parallel spiritual needs that directly co correspond to our physical needs. These are also things that we just can't live without. First of all, you can't live without food. Food is essential for the sustenance of life. Every creature survives by eating or absorbing food in some form. Food fuels the human body. Food is comprised of macronutrients, micronutrients, and phytonutrients. These each of these has a specific purpose within the body, providing what it needs to function successfully. Macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Carbohydrates provide the body with energy. Fats also provide the body with energy, but also support cell growth and the absorption of nutrients. Protein is used by the body to build and repair tissues. It is the building block for bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. Now, the micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. These nutrients are also essential and are found in all food sources in a variety of combinations. Deficiency of any nutrient can lead to health problems such as anemia or scurvy. Now, micronutrients are so vital to our well-being that many of the foods we eat are actually supplemented with vitamins and minerals in hopes of increasing our daily intake. And if you are like me, I take daily vitamins so that I can get all of the nutrients to keep my body going. Now, phytonutrients are the only non-essential nutrient found in foods. Phytonutrients are found in plants only and are used within the body to ward off illness and disease. For instance, consuming liposine found in tomatoes and watermelon can lower the risk of prostate cancer. Food is critical. It is essential for our physical survival. We can't live without it. Yet in the Gospel of John chapter 6, Jesus gives us specific guidance on food. Chapter 6 records one of the greatest miracles of all time, the feeding of 5,000 men, not including the women and children, with two fish and five barley loaves of bread. The Bible says that after Jesus blessed the food and his disciples distributed 
it to the multitude that all ate and were filled. Afterwards, they gathered up 12 baskets with the fragments of the fish and bread that were left over. Jesus then proceeded to disappear alone in the mountain to avoid being taken by authorities only to show up in the middle of the night walking on water to get to his disciples who were in a boat at sea. The next day, the people sought Jesus asking him, Rabbi, when did you come here? They asked this question because they never saw Jesus enter the boat with his disciples, nor did they see another boat that he could have possibly arrived in. But Jesus sensed that they were not concerned about his well-being, but about what he could feed them. So in verse 26, Jesus says, very, tru very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the leftovers and the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. These folks then had the nerve to ask him for a sign. Now, mind you, a whole multitude had been fed the previous day, the, what, what more of a sign could they possibly want? But here they go, telling Jesus, our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus responds, it is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. So just like those who were there, many of you are wondering what kind of bread is that? I want some of that bread. Well, brothers and sisters, that's when Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. In chapters four and verses four of both Matthew and Luke's gospels, Jesus puts it a different way. There he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So as much as we need physical food for, to sustain our physical bodies, we also need spiritual food to sustain our spiritual bodies. That's why we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Deuteronomy 30, 14 says, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. Psalm 119, 105 says that the word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Brothers and sisters, we cannot see where we are going without the word of God. We have no direction without the word of God. We can't live without food for our physical bodies or we can't live without food for our spiritual bodies. We need food. Next, brothers and sisters, you can't live without water. Water does so much for the human body. It creates saliva to aid in the digestion of food that helps uh, with nutrient absorption. It helps regulate our body temperature. Um, water helps lubricate and cushion our joints, spinal cord, and tissues. It aids in pushing out waste through perspiration, urination, and defecation. It restores body fluid to prevent decreased blood pressure, hypothermia, and dehydration. It aids in the prevention of constipation. It helps us lose weight and improve blood oxygen, oxygen circulation. It's good for the skin. We cannot live without water. And you know, Jesus understood that the physical body needed water. One time he was passing through Samaria. Um, Jesus made a pit stop at Jacob's well, tired from his journey. There is where a Samaritan woman showed up at the well and Jesus asked her for a drink of water. First of all, the woman was surprised that Jesus even said anything to her because the Jews and the Samaritans just didn't mix. The Jews thought they were better than the Samaritans and that the Samaritans were mongrel Jews 
And so they often acted snobby in the presence of Samaritans. But Jesus was not a snob. He merely told the woman that if she knew who he was, she would have asked God for living water. He explained that everyone who drinks from the well would get thirsty again. But whoever drank of the living water, it would be as if a spring of water were welling up on the inside of them, leading to eternal life. If you want to live, brothers and sisters, you need living water. The plain old water that you get from the grocery store, the, the, the Dasani water, the, the Aquafina water, those waters are okay. But if you really want to have life, you better get you some living water. So Jesus says in John 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living waters will flow from within them. So in order to get your well flowing, you have to believe. You have to act like you believe. You have to walk like you believe. You have to talk like you believe. You have to believe in the daytime and you have to believe in the nighttime. And, and for those of you who missed that, that means that you have to believe when people are watching you and you better still be believing when people don't have their eyes on you. You have to believe when you're by yourself. You have to believe when there's nobody else there and all you can do is fall down your knees and call on the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy. You must believe. You must believe if you want some living water because you can't live life without it. Finally, brothers and sisters, you can't live without Jesus. First of all, he is the bread of life. He is the living water. So Jesus is what you need to live. His whole purpose for coming into the world was to provide us with life. He wanted to not only sustain our lives, but to make our lives better. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Abundant living is not all about physical wealth. It's not about material goods. There are countless scriptures that let us know this. Jesus said we brought nothing into this world and it's certain that we can take nothing out. You know, that means that no matter what we have right now, it's not going to go with us when we go to the grave. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 5 and 10, whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. In other words, he was saying that, you know, money, all the wealth in the world is really meaningless. It's vanity. Paul told Timothy that the love of money is the root of all evil. And it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. And you know, most of us know that portion of the scripture, but we don't know the rest of the verse. It continues by saying some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many grief. In other words, the whole reason that the love of money it is, is not good for you is because a lot of times it distracts you from God. It takes you away from God. It takes you to doing things. It takes you takes your faith away from you when you start believing in that money and not in the God who gave you the money. Jesus said, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and lose or forfeit his soul? For where you treasure, there your heart will also be. Mm. Brothers and sisters, that's why our faith must be in Jesus. Our hope must be in Jesus. We have to be like the songwriter who said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. As I get ready to leave you today, I wonder how many of you are going to lean on Jesus? How many of you are going to eat of the bread of life? How many of you are going to drink of the living water? 
We need both food and water to live. But we get both through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. For if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says we shall be saved. This means that we shall be saved from death and destruction. We shall be saved from the lake of fire. We shall be saved from eternal damnation in hell. And if we are saved, then we have a right to the tree of life. Jesus, brothers and sisters, died one Friday. But early on one Sunday morning, he arose that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So I just want you to remember today that there are some things you cannot live without. And one of the main ingredients that you need, one of the things that you need to continue living, living is Jesus. May God bless you and may God forever keep you.